Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome. Hopefully the tech conference is going well for everybody and you're enjoying a lot of new information from a lot of good groups. Uh, my name is Eli Lichtblau, um, and I'm pretty happy to say that today's actually my two year anniversary at Wolfram. So it's pretty cool that I'm giving a talk at one of our tech conferences on the same day. Um, I'm also very happy to uh, show off uh, something that we've been working on for quite some time now, which is the Wolfram prompt repository. Uh, this is a culmination of a lot of efforts. Um, now, I do have the privilege of getting to show off this repository. Uh, those who have been attending some of these other talks may have seen tidbits of our chat books here or there, especially during Stephen's uh, keynote speech. Uh, but uh, this uh, repository houses a growing list of prompts uh, that can be used for interfacing with LLMs and programmatic and in intuitive ways. Uh, for those interested in the subject of LLMs and our repositories of useful interfaces, uh, I do recommend sticking around for subsequent talks, uh, especially Bob's LLM tool and uh, LLM tool repository talk that directly follows this one. Um, now, throughout this time slot, I will explain uh, what a prompt is, give examples of some of the prompts we already have in the repository, as well as how to use them, and uh, illuminate steps needed to submit your very own. Uh, hopefully, by the end of this talk, everybody will understand why we are so excited about this repository and also maybe you'll join our current rank of submitters in order to grow the repository out uh, so that it may offer stronger support uh, in whichever field may hold your interest. Uh, so first to kind of go over some bare basics, uh, this might be nothing new to a lot of you, uh, but first, what is a prompt? Um, a prompt is any given instruction or input uh, given to the AI in order to calibrate it towards completing a particular task. Uh, this could be a general request, such as um, suggesting that the AI give prose in the form of uh, Dr. Seuss, or as specific as instructing the AI to turn a specific narrative into a resume. Uh, in practical use, we often see multiple layers of prompting. Uh, when interfacing with any given LLM. Uh, generally, a single request will undergo multiple attempts in order to reach the desired results. Uh, and even further prompting may be needed to further refine or alter the results more so. Uh, over time, a single task given to an AI uh, could even take more time to complete due to uh, prompt engineering issues than it would have taken for you yourself to complete the task manually. And that's kind of where the Wolfram Prompt Repository comes into play uh, with 200 plus prompts already on the site. Much of the legwork is already completed when it comes to querying these LLMs. Uh, and since it is open to new submissions and further revisions, uh, any future prompt you develop can live here uh, and aid yourself and others um, by being easily available throughout the Wolfram technology stack. Uh, there will be more discussion on how these prompts work within the technology stack, uh, but first uh, let's kind of uh, go over the three categories again. Uh, I, I planned on talking about this a little bit more, but since Stephen already hit this in his keynote and did a pretty good job, we'll uh, kind of just give a brief overview for anybody who may have missed it. Uh, first, we have personas. Uh, this is probably our most fun subcategory. Uh, it encompasses prompts that are given any particular character to imitate. Uh, of course, this can be purpose oriented and helpful, such as our code assistant, uh, or it could be a recognizable character such as Groot or Yoda, or a, a, a popular archetype such as uh, Gen Z speak. Um, at the bottom, we have our modifiers. These prompts excel at um, ensuring that your output is modified in the speci specified way. Uh, if you need a block of text translated, or if you would like your last email converted into anything or nothing but emojis, uh, modifiers can cover a large range of possibilities. And finally, we have our function prompts. Uh, these are generally aimed towards completing specific tasks, uh, mainly manipulating text or generating results. Uh, suggesting names for a headline uh, based on an article, uh, um, turning a narrative into a theater script, de-jargonizing medical documents, uh, or even improving other prompts. Uh, these are all possible already with just a few of the function prompts that we have on the site. Uh, 
And now while each of these categories kind of has its general purpose, uh, some of the greatest results come with intermingling them. For example, uh, it's one thing to apply the too long didn't read function to an essay in order to get the highlights. But if you wanted to do it as Shakespeare composing an Instagram, I mean, it might not be practical, but it is something that you can absolutely do with what we have. Uh, now, uh, you'll notice that there are subdivisions underneath each of these uh, categories. Um, these can help kind of illustrate even further what uh, our range is uh, with all of these prompts. Uh, personas, for example, uh, can be divided into a few. Uh, the advisor bots are uh, a very helpful team of bots that can give you advice ranging from budgeting to personal training. Uh, the character types and roles uh, and fictional, fictional characters can offer you uh, a, a great deal of different personalities or you know, types of people such as a drill sergeant or a court jester. Um, we have our writers and writing styles or writing genres, excuse me, uh, which kind of replicate a certain genre or a unique style that a writer has, uh, again, like William Shakespeare or maybe like a postmodern writer bot. And of course, uh, some of these come with a little bit of Wolfram spirit, such as Wolfie or the ever popular Bernardo. Um, as we shift down to look at the modifiers, uh, we'll see a few less uh, subsections, but still extremely useful um, and a drastic shift in use case. Uh, while personas are generally more equipped to give a range of responses based on whatever inputs you feed them, um, there is like no specified output other than the AI is supposed to be X talking about Y. With, modify with modifiers, you gain more control in narrowing the scope. Uh, for example, our modifier yes, no will only give you the answer yes or no uh, to answer any specific question you give it. Translated will give you the original text back to you request, uh, re the, sorry, excuse me, the original text back to you in the translated language. And emoji translated by contrast will do the same thing, but only with emojis. We also have the ever popular ELI5, or explain like I'm five, uh, in which the LLM will be prompted to give you a simple explanation of any given topic. Uh, a couple other cool modifiers similar to that one are know about me or target audience, uh, which you can feed information about yourself or your audience in order to get a uh, output that's specifically catered to your needs. Moving back to functions, uh, we will see a greater list of subdivisions. These generally revolve around text manipulation, analysis, and generation, but also involve prompts geared towards assisting in academia, as well as ones that are, exist purely for entertainment. Uh, we have function prompts for suggesting names, titles, jokes, cover letters, uh, prompts that aim to rephrase any given text to be longer, shorter, formal, or informal. Uh, some of the functions take medical or scientific jargon and output plain speak or vice versa. Um, really any task mundane or otherwise uh, can be encapsulated in a function and reduced to essentially a few keystrokes. But this section also has uh, the greatest growth potential. I mean, we already have about 120 uh, function prompts, uh, but uh, Hopefully after these series of talks, we will see more original submissions take on like previously unthought of scenarios from you, our audience. Now, before getting into submissions, uh, we should maybe take a look at how we can use our prompts within our technology stack. Uh, again, Stephen did a uh, nice demo on this today uh, and really showed off um, both programmatic and chat usage, uh, but uh, I, I think it's just important to, again, go over this in case somebody either missed it or in case there's more to be deemed or gleamed from this. Now, what I did, and you might have not seen everything on screen, uh, by, I just went to a standard notebook and went to File New to open one of our chat-enabled notebooks. As you can see, it pops up. And uh, with this little icon here, we can tell that our code assistant is our uh, default persona that we're talking to. I'll probably be changing that since I think I'm going to do a little bit more of a fun example today. I've been uh, 
playing around with it. And one example that never really gets old for me is messing around with uh, Rick Astley's 1987 hit, uh, Never Gonna Give You Up. So let's see what the AI can do with this. Uh, first, uh, this one I think I wanna do with Pirate Speak. Uh, so with Pirate Speak selected, uh, I'm going to ask, um, And before we wait 10 minutes for an entire rendition, uh, let's also just add that there. Oh, can I increase my zoom level? Sure thing, sorry. Let me see if I can get that going. Actually, I don't know how to do that. If uh, Josh, if you could help me out with that, that'd be appreciated. Well, that's interesting. I actually have not seen that. I think we're gonna reevaluate that. I think it might've caught on to a bad hallucination and tried to follow it out. Well, there we go. So uh, oh, thank you. Oh, well, maybe I think 150 is more agreeable. OK. Uh, hopefully, that's better, everyone. Um, as we can see here, uh, this response is a little bit more agreeable than our previous one where again it, i i think the ai was just having a little bit of a nightmare there uh regardless um it seems on our second attempt uh the pirate persona seems to be working quite a bit better uh now let's say that we like what our first input output is but uh we kind of want to keep it separated uh from our future queries uh, we can hit shift and uh, backtick to create a cell, uh, a chat delimiter, uh, separating the context between what's below and above it. Uh, and if I hit single quote, open up my bar again. Now I could type this back out, uh, or as we can do with our lovely notebooks, I can just control copy and paste that back in. And this time, again, I would like it to be the pirate singing, uh, never gonna give you up but I wanna add a modifier as well. So I can hit the pound symbol. And uh, let's also, since we love emojis, emojify it. Wonderful. Now it's gonna go through, uh, give us a little outro there a few more emojis, perfect. And say that instead of the uh, top one, this one really just works for us. We really like it, but then we forget that we uh, really needed it translated into uh, Spanish. We can just hit our function key of exclamation point at the beginning of the cell, uh, type in uh, the direction that we would like translated. So this is a really nifty thing. If we want to translate in line with the chat cell, we just have to give it the right arrow. But if we want to interact with what's above us, it's just as easy as that. And he translates his uh, song back to us and even includes in the same emojis as were there before, because I guess translating emojis just doesn't make sense. Anyway. Uh, so this is a neat example of how we can uh, mess around with uh, the three different main categories within a chat setting, uh, as well as separate context between what we're working with. Another neat thing is that if we were to uh, 
want to change between personas, it's as easy as clicking and uh, adding and managing from the repository itself. Or if you already have ones installed, you can just click them there. This one's name is Cutie Pie. Its only purpose is to kind of be cute. And uh, as you can see, if I select them and rerun the evaluation, uh, we get a very painfully cute uh, response. Now, this is all within a chat setting. Of course, uh, here at Wolfram, we also have uh, access to the uh, programmatic side of our notebooks that has been there longer, much, much longer than the chat side. Uh, and if we wanted to uh, interact with it in a more programmatic way, it's pretty simple. Uh, out of fear of stealing context from Rick Astley, I'm going to put a chat delimiter there, though, just in case. Uh, All right, uh, so for this example, um, we saw this in uh, the keynote speech again, uh, Stephen queried uh, the LLM synthesize prompt. Sorry, uh, typing and thinking at the same time is, or talking and thinking at the same time is a little bit of a trouble for me. Bring Bernardo out. If everybody here is familiar with Bird Say, they may know who Bernardo is. If not, he is a big deal around Wolfram. I like asking Bernardo what to wear because he he's just a very fashionable persona. So uh, again. We'll uh, have to interact with OpenAI. It will output a response. Uh, with these, it's a little bit more of a one-shot uh, um, instance. You, you're not sharing chat context between different inputs and outputs. Uh, you're more just asking it to create a sentence using this prompt with the, uh, uh, the context of the question. And it gives us a pretty good uh, fashion advice for the rest of the week, if anybody would like to follow that. Um, furthermore, though, we can also use another function, uh, LLM resource function. And uh, I think this is where we saw some weirdness during the keynote, but hopefully Eli5 will be nice. And again, we wait a little bit for the prompt uh, to go through all. It's uh, that's not bad. So uh, as we see here, uh, it's not just uh, reduced to the chat settings. We can use these in programmatic ways, and it's uh, uh, very uh, can be fun, but also technically uh, helpful during certain uh, tasks. Uh, now that we've kind of covered the basics of the uh, using prompts uh, within a chat setting and programmatically, uh, I think now would be a good time to really hit on what it's like to submit a prompt and uh, the process to go through. Uh, back in our prompt repository, we see along the search bar our main categories, and then at the very end, submit a prompt. Clicking that will open up a download to uh, a just a standard templated default definition notebook for the prompt repository. Um, now, this is what it looks like just as I opened it. Uh, that being said, uh, for the sake of time, I have already filled out one that we can go through just to highlight the examples a little bit better. All right, uh, to begin, we'll come up with a name. Depending on if you're making a function, modifier, or persona, uh, there are some kind of guidelines. I won't say rules, but guidelines that those in the uh, in the review submit or the submission review team uh, kind of follow. Uh, for a function like I'm going to do, it's good to kind of have an active verb uh, description of what you're looking to do. So that's what I did here. 
Um, I thought I would make a bot that helps generate RPG dungeons for tabletop games. Uh, so for uh, the title, that kind of was self-explanatory for me. Uh, underneath that, we see a little description space uh, where we kind of make a quite literal, uh, succinct definition of what we're looking to do. This will help people understand the goal of your prompt uh, as they go through the repository. Uh, it's okay to kind of have quirky ones for personas, but usually we lean towards very literal ones when working with modifiers or functions. Uh, uh, underneath that, of course, we see our categories. Um, again, I wanted to do a function, so that's what I'll have selected here. Um, moving further down, we'll finally get to the prompt definition section. Now, this is uh, kind of the meat and bones of the uh, process. This is where you're going to elaborate on what you want your prompt to do. Uh, this is the, the prompting. Um, here, you'll also get the option to add templated slots, as I have done. One, two, and three were all uh, template slots that I added positionally. Um, their purpose is outlined here in the uh, prompt itself. And then uh, when I set these up, I also set off default values for them. So if nobody were to, uh, so if somebody were to use this prompt, uh, but not, uh, not want to like fill out all the parameters, there's kind of a default version of it that they will get that is uh, quite bland, uh, but, uh, these can be filled out to a user's specifications as they use the prompt. Uh, here, we get down to the chat, rele chat related features. Since this is not a persona, I won't need to change the icon. Uh, Bernardo, again, the most popular of the personas here is the default. Um, he won't show up for this guy, but um, at least we know he's watching. Uh, the cell processing function and the cell post evaluation function are, are can just be default for uh, the purpose of this one. Uh, these items are also both probably going to be refined into a, a, a different section of the notebook upon further reviews or revision. So for the time being, uh, they're good here, but they might change in a bit. From the purpose of my uh, example, I just want a plain text response. So my output interpreter, I'm just going to leave a standard string. Uh, of course, those who are looking for something not in uh, plain text can uh, manipulate this section uh, to their will. And here in the documentation section, we once again see uh, a, a bit about the parameters. Uh, we get a chance to A, define what it is our parameters are doing, and then uh, give an explanation so that users uh, kind of have a, a guiding hand, I guess, in what you're aiming to do, especially for more complicated prompting. Uh, this becomes a little bit more uh, significant. For what I'm doing now, maybe not. Also of note, uh, something that I didn't mention before, but throughout you'll see informational boxes over each of the sections. These are he here to guide you even further. Um, we do have style guidelines uh, for this definition notebook that can be followed, but if it, you don't want to go searching through the documentation, these info boxes are pretty helpful. Details and options can be fi uh, filled out as well. Um, all right. Now the LLM configuration, uh, this section is, uh, 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 well, one, the LLM tools talk that's coming up is something that you guys should definitely join. Uh, and I'll try to uh, hurry up through my speech so you can get going to that. Uh, but this is where you can define tools that a particular uh, prompt to use. So if you make a prompt whose sole goal is to tell you where your constellation is in the sky right now of your birth month and give you a picture of it, generated from the web um, using the web image search and maybe some type of astro tool could be inserted into this. Um, also, we have our LLM configuration options. This is where you can choose a default model for your prompt, a default version of that model, uh, temperature weighting. Uh, this is where you can really um, define 
if you want your prompt to be that specific to a certain model, et cetera, this is where you can define those options. Finally, we'll get down to our uh, example sections. I've already run these examples a few times. As before, uh, I had three parameter slots that I decided to fill out here. Um, I ran my function. I asked for a normal difficulty rating for a specific rule set for a shipwreck cove theme. And as it can be seen here, it went through and did a pretty good job of creating a um, just a standard tabletop run for a fun little game. Uh, I even asked Pirate Speak to be the dungeon master for the adventure, and uh, nicely enough, he was very good at uh, trying to get things started. Uh, so uh, uh, sharing context with some of these types of functions uh, just has a lot of interplay between other things that an LLM can do, and it's just very exciting to see. Programmatically, I also did the same thing. Of note, though, um, since it's a uh, programmatic one-shot, uh, I can't follow up and ask uh, Pirate to be my dungeon master with this. It's not going to share context, uh, which is something that I uh, was able to add in the uh, issues below. Now, in these sections, you can also add you know, properties and relations, the entire scope of a function. Uh, if you happen to get a really, really, really neat example that you just wanted to have for the world to see, uh, all of these are possibly possible to be shown in this section. And then finally, we'll get to a section that contributors of other uh, resources will find familiar. Uh, this is just where we can enter keywords for searching uh, your name, of course, the topics that this fall under and any other kind of documentation or related resources that you would like to share or link back to. And finally, uh, compatibility where 13.2 plus is the default. Uh, and um, depending on how technical some of the prompts will be, that might have to be increased to 14 plus uh, in the future. Uh, and then that gets us to our author and th submission notes. Author notes are something that can be shared with the wide world, where, where submission notes are only shared with those of us in the uh, review team. Um, with these, you can put any questions or uh, call to arms that you would like, uh, as well as uh, engage a bit with those who are looking uh, to revise further on uh, your prompting ideas. Now, at the very end, if everything looks good and dandy and you are pretty happy with what you have, you can hit submit to the repository. This will go through a check to make sure that everything is up to code. It might come up with a uh, potential issue like it did here. It's telling me that I have a pretty large cell that takes up too much room, um, but I think I'm going to be OK with it because that's, that's an issue I can live with. Um, and there we go, we get a green check that's been submitted for review. And from there, the review team will be able to interface with you uh, to ask if there's anything um, that they can uh, either small changes about name, uh, name guidelines again, or if there's uh, other things that can be done to uh, help assist in getting things pushed through. Um, all right, we are just about at time. I'm sorry, I was hoping to uh, get a bit more time for Q&A if it was needed. Um, uh, this is my last pitch. If you are interested in the tool repository, we have a talk starting in two minutes with Bob, and that's another thing that we're very excited about. It, uh, it's a way of giving our prompts the tools they need to be accurate, um, and uh, I think uh, it might hopefully answer a few questions for you as well. Um, I would like to thank everybody for joining this talk, and uh, if anybody has any questions, I will stick around a bit longer for Q&A. Thanks, all.